Hello, welcome to Join News Prime. I'm Ernest Minu. Coming up in the next hour, Gabon assures it is carrying out due diligence in the gold for oil butter deal set to start March 2023. If we're going to buy in CDs again, what we're going to experience is that there will be greater leakage of gold from our system. But the Chamber of Mines is cautioning government to hasten slowly. The devil is in the details. We don't have the details. And that is the difficulty. Yes, we know about the domestic gold purchase program, but then you are talking about the counterparties who are interested in taking gold for oil, which they will sell to, to the state. We need some more details. Also coming up, bumpy roads. Motorists lament the illegal and indiscriminate construction of speed ramps that is causing more harm than good. The bump is in Sutta GS, you know, see. Bump is in here, bumping. Carbage made your bump in, so. I ain't gonna be seeing it. What did he say? I won't see if he was saying. The beer can't see in the room. Hello again, my name is Ernest Minu. Let's settle for the details now. And government says it will ensure due diligence in its negotiations with the various companies in its gold for oil butter deal. The move is aimed at getting cheaper options for fuel and also reduce the stress on the Ghana city. Since the social media announcement by the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, they have been concerns about the practicality of this policy. We'll hear from government shortly on this. But first, listen to the CEO of the Chamber of Mines, Dr. Suleiman Kony. See, the, the devil is in the details. We don't have the details. And that is the difficulty. Yes, we know about the domestic gold purchase program. But then you are talking about the counterparties who are interested in taking gold for oil, which they will sell to, to the state. We need some more details. And this is where uh, government needs to take its time and go through due diligence. Yes, we know that we are in a, a, a difficult situation. But we, we need to hasten slowly and make sure that we really understand and appreciate what we want to do before we actually sign off. And on, on paper, it looks, it looks novel. It is quite innovative. This is something we've never done before. I think that this is something we, we, we should be able to do. But let's hasten slowly so that we really understand the various risks involved. Well, former part minister and member of the Mines and Energy Committee, Dr. Kwabana Donko, says the introduction of the policies exposing government's de desperation. If PMMC is going to buy from small scale miners who in 2020 accounted for about 40% of our total gold export, if we're going to buy in CDs again, what we're going to experience is that there will be greater leakage of gold from our system. And when the Minerals Commission briefed Parliament at uh, a closed door meeting in Takradi. Even the income tax on small scale mining, when it increased from 3 to about 4%, we, we experienced a reduction in the quantum of gold sold on the Ghanaian market. Gold then leaves the shores of Ghana. And therefore, if you say you're going to pay the small-scale miners who account for 40% of our total gold export in cities, you can think that at least half of their products will leave the Ghanaian system through our porous borders. But speaking on the probe here on Joy News, Deputy Minister in Charge of Petroleum, Dr. Amin Adam, insists proper due diligence is currently underway by the Bank of Ghana. He adds that the policy will take off in March 2023. As I'm speaking to you, the Bank of Ghana is undertaking due diligence on some of the gold brokers. Okay, so due diligence is a major part of the work we do as a government because we don't want to exercise indiscretion. We want the discretion we exercise to uh, serve the interests of the Ghanaian people who put us in government. And so we have to make sure that proper due diligence is done before we take off so that we don't stop along the way. Is government desperate? 
Uh, government is desperate every day. Government is desperate every day because we are not happy about the economic circumstances of our country. And we know that some of these are beyond our control. What is happening in Russia is beyond our control. The logistical challenges in the oil and gas industry globally is beyond our control. Uh, petroleum products are priced uh, globally. It's beyond our control. And so to get desperate ideas, to address desperate problems, you know, mm. I think should be uh, part of uh, uh, the overall uh, work of, of, of government. Meanwhile, the Bank of Ghana has been commenting on this initiative. Here's the governor of the Central Bank, Dr. Ernest Addison. Coming to the gold for crude oil swap program, this is still being discussed for implementation in 2023. We have 20% of the large scale producers already uh, planned to be bought by the Central Bank. But more importantly, I think the agreement is that the PMMC will be buying a lot of the gold which is exported by the licensed gold exporters. They are, they are exporting quite a bit of gold, uh, as much as $3 billion uh, in, in 2018 and 2019. Uh, so the data that I have seen shows that the licensed gold exporters have significant amounts of gold, which PMMC will be asking them to make available to support this program. So they will be providing most of the gold that will be used for the crude oil swap. I think that the oil will be refined, not crude. Yeah, sometimes uh, that gets a bit confusing, but the discussion so far has focused on refined oil. So we are going to use uh, gold, not refined gold. This is Dory gold. From the last discussions that we had, uh, these licensed gold exporters, they don't refine their gold, uh, so many of them. And that's what is going to be exported uh, for the refined gold. The and the BOG uh, there, the central bank governor, was speaking at a meeting on interaction with the media after the Monetary Policy Committee meeting. We saw an increase in the policy rate. Beverly will bring you details of that and more at 8 p.m. when she joins us with business. But let's do some politics now. The former president, John Dramani Mahama, has revealed that he has no preference for any of the aspirants who have penciled their names for the impending NDC national executive elections next month addressing regional and constituency executives and stalwarts of the party in Guam, John Dramani Mahama stated that he is father of the party and therefore cannot take sides, uh, but will work with both the victors and the vanquished at the end of the elections to achieve victory in the 2024 elections. Here's a report by Upper West correspondent of Ixalan. John Dramani Mahama in an interaction with the regional executives and some stalwarts of the party Aware that despite the tremendous development brought by the National Democratic Congress, which has bettered the lives of the people in 2016, the new Patriotic Party pooped a deceived Ghanaians into believing that he was incompetent and the party voted out. The cascading effect is the untold hardship on the people. Whatever happens in this country affects everybody. When we make a wrong choice, it affects us, not today, but tomorrow and tomorrow next, and next year and the year after. We made that wrong choice in 2016. That's why everything we did, people of Ghana were convinced that we were incompetent. And so they voted against us. And the effects of that decision in 2016 are continuing to follow us every day till now. Don't let them tell you Ukraine war and COVID and what and what and what. No, it is not Ukraine war, it's not COVID. He admonished the constituency and regional executives to work together, stating that Ghanaians are looking up to them to salvage the country and they dare 
no fill them. Who are the executives that are going to take us into the 2024 election? Ghana is looking at you. All of you sitting in this room, Ghana is looking at you. Whatever little you do, it's what will rescue the people of Ghana from the hardship that they're going through. So don't think that the responsibility you've taken is light. You've won, you've finished jubilating. Put the jubilation aside. Now it's time to work. 2024 elections, there is no Supreme Court. The work of winning the election is at the polling station. And the people of Ghana are saying that we are waiting for you. What else do we have to do? We must get our things ready on the ground. And so it's not going to be business as usual. But I want to thank you, Upper West, for the support you gave me in 2020. You your results were one of the best amongst all the regions. And this time I expect us to capture all the consequences and increase the gap between us and MPP in the presidential interview. So it means a lot of work is going to depend on you. Turning to the impending NDC national executive election, he stated that he has no preferred choice among the aspirants. Yes, I'm the father of the party. And so me, I don't have any preferences. Everybody who's fighting for a position in the party is a person who has served the party. And I leave it to you to make that choice. And when you made that choice, we will work with who has won, and who has given won will bring them on board. On whether he will put his name up for the flag bearership of the NDC again, though he enjoys massive following from the party, decided to use the tortoise approach, delaying the big announcement. Before the signal to give some people have shot their guns to start running. <laughs> the race is a marathon race. And so, I know marathon when you start giddy, 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 giddy. By the time you reach Kotawe, you are panting. <laughs> so, some people have started running. But uh, we we'll wait till the process is over. The new executives are in place. They give the guidelines. They open nominations. And then we'll see who picks those nomination forms. Whatever the outcome, he assured the supporters that his support for the party will always be legendary. But I want to say, in whatever position I occupy as president, being having been given the opportunity by this party to be a former president, I'm always going to be there for this party. Whether I'm the flag bearer, whether I'm the flag bearer, I'm not the flag bearer. I know that NDC is my party. Earlier, the former president was at Dondoli to condole and commiserate with the family of a former youth organizer of the NDC, Alaji Mumuna Mankama, who passed on days before the NDC regional executive election. Alaji Mumuna Mankama was a man of many parts and has worked most of his entire life for the NDC and the development of the Limayne Dondolu community. Reporting for J News, Rafik Salam. Wow. Let's return to our earlier story on the gold for fuel butter trade. Um, we're joined by Emmanuel Yenchi, who is a small-scale miner and a former director of the operations for uh, Small Scale Miners Association of Ghana. And he joins us via Zoom. Thank you very much, Mr. Yenchi, for your time here on Join News Prime. And so I'm sure you've heard this announcement made by government. Uh, we are told that stakeholders have been engaged, including the Small Scale Miners Association. Uh, even though you are a former executive, uh, you, you still have, you still know what's happening within the association. Have you been engaged formally and what can you share with us? Um, thank you very much. Um, with respect to the timelines and when government engages small scale association, it will be very difficult for me to say because I'm a former and uh, active executives are there. Mm. Um, but I know that government has started um, engaging. What do you make of the deal? Is it practicable and is it the best deal going forward uh, in terms of the consequence it may have for your operations and as well as uh, what government envisage to bring down the stress on the Ghana city? What do you make of this? 
Right. Um, I mean, in times like this, the small scale association and the industry um, players um, feel obliged to support the country or government, um, especially initiative that is going to support the country um, in the situation as it is now. Now, um, one thing that I want us to look at is, you know, buying something directly with um, gold, right? No matter how you look at it, it's going to be cheaper than converting the gold to dollar and then to go and buy. Because in between there, there are some um, um, supply chain operators there who also be aiming for profit. Mm -hmm. And so once you have the direct um, uh, transaction, it's, it's easier and cheaper. And therefore, um, I think it's the best um, policy uh, ever. Uh, As so small scale miners, uh, you are going to be paid in CD uh, for the gold that government will get for the trade. Is that something that sits well with you? Well, I mean, as it stands now, no small scale miner is paid in dollars in Ghana. Even if you bring in the dollars, you would have to change it at the bank. Right. And so every responsible small scale miner, legal, I mean, um, all the, goals we, the gold we, I mean, we sell outside the country, um, we get the exchange in CDs because um, um, they don't give us dollars mm. in the bank. At what rate do you trade with? Well, that is flexible. It depends on your bank and how well you're able to negotiate. Mm. Should, the, should the government go ahead to do, uh, I mean, to trade with you in terms of the uh, Bank of Ghana rates, which are usually lower, uh, will that affect you in any way? Well, then it means that government will have to do a number of things. Um, so that if um, government is talking about Bank of Ghana rate, that it means it has to be a, the general rate or a standard rate for all, including mm -hmm. the commercial banks. Mm -hmm. Other than that, that may not be favorable. But are you able to meet the demands um, in terms of how much we will need uh, for, for, for the period? Yeah, um, I understand that government Ghana now needs roughly around um, uh, 450 million US dollars monthly to purchase um, our fuel. Yeah. Um, as per the records available, last August, the small scale sector total gold produce was close to 200 million USD. Now, um, this is without the last scale. I also understand that in the press briefing by the minister, um, government has started some negotiation with the last scale as well of which they have placed some 20% of their total gold output. Yes, I think we'll have more than enough to right. support. Thank you very much for your time. That's Emmanuel Yen, Chief, former Director of Operations for the Small Scale Miners Association. Uh, John, not his real name, was just a boy when his own father sold him to three boat owners on Lake Volta. His masters forced him to engage in hazardous fishing activities, but he managed to escape and is now in class six and already on the path of becoming a professional footballer. He hopes to represent the Ghana at the World Cup someday. Well, Abba went to visit him on an island community in the northern region and now reports. I am in a canoe heading to an island community in the northern region to meet John and his mother. When John was a boy, his father, took him from their family house at Dodoa and trafficked him to a fishing community called Esuoso, close to Hausa Kope in the Pru district. His father allegedly took money from three boat owners. His mother tells me John's father came for him under the guise of getting him to start school, but rather sold him to some fishermen on Lake Vota. <laughs> About I mean, four months ago, I heard my son was engaged Mofa in vi. dangerous fishing activities on Lake Volta. I cried. I was determined to find him. I really suffered to take care of him. I sold some of my personal possessions just to take care of him. I bumped into my son at Yeji. It was unexpected, and I am grateful to God. 
He became very sick. He was beaten by the boatmasters, and that affected his health. They beat him with your paddles when he's unable to dive into the water to untangle a net. My boy, he was always crying and complaining of waist pains and his abdomen. I couldn't eat. John's duties included but were not limited to scooping water from the boats and diving into Lake Vota to untangle fishing nets. He was forced to work on the lake from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. and continue at midnight and return at 5 a.m. every day. He was physically abused, starved and neglected. John was not one of the lucky few children rescued by the Ghana Police Service. He fled from his third boatmaster. Arise, Ghana, you for your country. Let me see the for I'm now at John's school on the island where a class is in session in a dilapidated structure made of mud. Now John no longer has to go fishing during school hours. He says he's determined to complete his education and pursue a career in professional football and hopefully represent Ghana at the World Cup. He's optimistic he will make enough money to build a new school to replace the rundown structure in his community. My friend Casimero. 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 We work for me FC. On the field, my friends call me Casimero. I play for Familia FC. I will develop the community and provide them with electricity and a better school building. I know I can do it. Our school building is dilapidated and we are unable to do proper studies yet. When the sun starts shining, we have to close. The head teacher here at John's school says all attempts to get authorities to fix the dilapidated school structure have proven futile. He's hopeful John, whom he describes as generous, will help change the story of the community. He's kind. Yeah. He's good. He's good to us. Yeah. Uh, when we talk about football aspect, he's one of our key players mm. in, the, in the school. And you also show due respect to the teachers. I think the issue of uh, child trafficking has been a, a worrying situation to almost all. I've now met Godwin and, uh, Awudi. He's an assembly member for the Yeji Traditional Council uh, Electoral Area. 31 children were rescued at the Yeji uh, in, in the first quarter of 2021. His assembly is working hard to ensure more children are rescued from fishermen and boat owners who are using them for hazardous work. You're watching Johnny Spine with me, Ernest Mino. Still to come, bumpy roads, motorists lament the illegal and indiscriminate construction of speed ramps that is causing more harm than good. Between two thirty years, you see, bumping, ten years bumping, carpet made now bumping, so I ain't gonna be seeing. What did you say? I want fifty. You want say? The beer can't find the glue. Details of this and more after the break. Please stay with us. Thanks for staying with us here on Joy News Prime. Now, speed ramps have been designed to check tough speed on our roads, especially at critical intersections on urban roads. However, there's a growing trend where residents in various communities put up ramps without recourse to city authorities. Motorists say the phenomenon is posing a serious threat to road safety. I traveled around the country and here's a report about drivers calling on the Highways Authority and the Urban Roads Department to intervene.
was a pleasant drive through the countryside until the constant slams into potholes stole my joy and eventually turned this journey into a nightmare. Many of the roads in Bole Bamboy are riddled with potholes. Even if you're wearing a seat belt, the road forces you to dance. Attempt by some locals to control excessive speed by some drivers piqued my interest. Residents had built sand mounts to act as speed ramps. According to Isaac Bamunye, who spoke on behalf of the residents, too many people have died here. We are putting up this uh, speed ramp because anytime we have been observing uh, I mean, an accident here, that is why we are putting up. Just three weeks ago, uh, one of our father lo lost his life through this uh, road accident. That's why we are putting up that is in the speed ramp. So we are calling for the government to come and support us. Okay. If not, this our uh, community, things are going by. There were four of such mounds on the same stretch. However, the downpour had washed away their efforts. But residents say they have a plan. So our plan is that we are just contributing some small coins so that we can buy cement and other things. So that we can put up, we can get some cement and then also make it in the proper way. When asked how oncoming vehicles could be worn to take precaution, here's what Isaac said. So the first thing we are doing, we just cut some leaves and then we put on the road so that any vehicle come in will know that there's something happening here so that uh, he reduce his speed and then um, that is the for now. The situation here appears to be symptomatic of a bigger road safety concern, the conundrum of ramps. Whereas this is designed to control speed and save lives, motorists are concerned about how this tool is being deployed and its adverse effect on night driving. Further down in the central region town of Asin Datiaso, a driver, Kofi Usu, who plies the Asin Cape Coast Road, approached the team when he figured out what the story was about. He's livid about what he describes as poor construction of speed ramps on that stretch. My problem is that there are no road signs to warn us. Some of them just spring up. And roads are not constructed per the standards of the highways authority. It is destroying our cars. He noted the nature of the rams does not only affect their vehicles but also their health. We have developed waste pains as a result. This is bad. A passenger in his car added her voice. There's one ahead of us. Many trucks fall off on that stretch. Imagine the harm that will come to those nearby. The problem here is that the sign, the road sign, is just where the ramp is. How exactly is any motorist expected to take precaution? When you have the signpost, which is by the way falling off, just where you have the road ramp. But again, the residents here at Asenda Dieso say the speed on the road is snuffing out lives, including children. Even for the next few years, I'm going to have to fly here. I'm going to say, class, maybe, you're going to hear you, sir.
Adiesa, sa white line we see enye dwuma. So when I'm takwa kwa so a, when you kwa so a be the car be show you see a. For me say say white line in them. En na no so your factor they say car light ni to so a, obi e hu say at light we see na eden, e da o me, e bi ni so. En ti akwa highway for na nkasa nkasa no ma dwuma no ma gya mum mum na, ti me mfo mum na e ye e bomb mum e den, e mo because o baby bi o say the sea o ma, en international road pa na baby bi o say o so a. En say say that the speed ramp is disturbing us a lot. Uh, especially if you don't know the road, if you have not been passing on this road, uh, you can it can lead you to cause an accident. Because sometimes you approach the ramp before you get to know there is a ramp. Uh, so if they can maybe fix a signboard, I think it will help us. The residents say that's because of the speeding. That's why some of them created themselves. You see, some put sand; they mow the sand on the road. Uh, how do you drivers respond to them? I think they are right because uh, I think some years back uh, people have been dying through this uh, speeding and others. So I think some of them they write to the authority, but the authority were not responding to that, and children were dying out of those speeding and others. So I think out of their own uh, power and others, they tried to maneuver and constructed this uh, long. Later, at Anumabo, we found the truck that has fallen on its side. An eyewitness to the accident tells Joy News the truck lost balance whilst climbing the ramp. This, he added, is a common phenomenon. The ramp is too high, especially on one side. So the truck tried to cross over on the lower side. That is what happened. This happens very often. Five cases alone in the past few months. Five? 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 Because of ramp, na ramp no one 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 away or no way and our crew man for no way. Aside from the nature of the ramps and the random construction, motorists say the absence of road signs worsen the situation. Walter is a driver here. We are pleading that they should bring a signboard. That will notify those who have not been using this road. Yeah, because sometimes when you are driving at night, uh, you will see like those who are not used to this road. Uh -huh. Sometimes they will pass here and if you are not careful, uh -huh, once they approach the ram unexpectedly, they will come to your way and it leads to accident. I think last time it happened on this road. Yes. On the Accra Aplau Road, John News received reports of how a similar action had allegedly caused an accident. Our cameras captured many ramps on the highways and not well positioned road signs to warn motorists. In 1953, Arthur Holy Compton, a physicist and Nobel Prize winner, created a design for what he called a traffic control bump. Some people referred to the device as Holy Hump which was later changed to a speed bump. Speed ramps, as they have now come to be known, are effective in keeping vehicle speeds down. But poorly designed speed bumps that stand too tall or with too sharp an angle can be disruptive for drivers and may be difficult to navigate for vehicles with low ground clearance, even at a very low speed. So what is the standard and protocol for the construction of speed ramps? Here's Road Safety Consultant and Executive Director of Top Tech Transport and Logistics Limited, Cecil Gabra. Um, we have the speed limits, okay, in, uh, if you look at the LI-2180, it is specified that when you are driving in town, you should drive at a maximum speed of 50 kilometers per hour. If you are traveling on the highway, it is 90 kilometers per hour. If you are traveling on the motorway, it is 100 kilometers per hour. However, if you are driving and you get to a place like a hospital, one, you are not even supposed to honk your horn. You are not supposed to drive at any speed. You need to lower your speed. But as you know, uh, drivers are really, really stubborn. We are really recalcitrant, right? If the laws are there, but we won't. So speed ramps have been placed there 
to reduce your speed, to force you to reduce your, your speed. In other areas, we have what we call the rumble strips. Rumble strips, of course, are rubber-like um, um, substance that are laid in, I'll say, on the road. Okay, sometimes there are two, there are three, and then if you run through it, it will give you an uncomfortable sound. Uh, you you hear something like bum 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 bum, right? And then the other name for it is sleeping policeman, okay, which tells you that, hey, my brother, be alert, slow down, okay. So in other cases where ramps must not be fixed there, we fix rumble strips. Okay. Now, these are done by engineers, okay. In Ghana, when you talk about road engineers, I'm sure we have the best, okay. So they are supposed to do it. So when you talk about... Um, about rumble strips, you talk about rams, nobody can do it. It is up to the Department of Urban Roads, that is, if the rams are in the city, if they are on the highways, then it is the Ministry of Roads and Highways responsibility. And you can find the full version on our YouTube channel and all our social media handles. Now, optimism among Ghanaians about the chances of the Black Stars progressing to the round 16, round of 16 of the ongoing FIFA World Cup has been boosted with the Stars 3-2 win against South Korea. The technical team and the playing body have been commended for not repeating mistakes that led to the team's defeat uh, in the match against Portugal. Latif Idris watched the game with some Ghanaian supporters at the Bukum Boxing Arena. Let us come through with this report. Ghana's economy is in crisis. The nation needed a good distraction, a definite Black Stars victory at the World Cup. The opening game defeat against Portugal set the country back. But the 31 million supporters had only one outcome on their minds before the game started against South Korea. So, not only did Salisu's opening goal calm nerves, it gave the team a lot of confidence. And then there was Kudus's first goal. We are paying somebody to do the work for us, but we those are giving the people the work. We've made ourselves the coaches and we are judging. You see now? I knew we would win. But I didn't expect 2 0 in the first half, seriously. But I knew we'd win that one day. However, the quick equalizer by the South Koreans was like a dagger in the heart for the faint hearted. Some fans had this to say after the 3-2 win. I had a dream that Ghana take the World Cup. After I went back to the sleep again, I had a dream that, hey, Ghana is winning Australia and uh, Switzerland 2-0. Whether maybe you are doubting, and I have the bet here. I won the bet. I won the bet here. Later, I'll give it to you so that I show it to the people. And I had a dream that, hey, Team December, it will be the year of Ghana. It will be the year of Ghana because we are lifting the great gold up. This time, for the first time, my coach, Otuadu, kudos, and he did a good uh, substitute. The Black Star, you know, I'm in Ghana, so I love the Black Star because I have a, because I have a, a, a footballer, footballer is in my home. So I love the Black Star and I love the team. So we all have to support the Ghana Black Star. Because we are in Ghana, so we have to do that. We cannot do this in Nigeria. It's small Ghana, it's small okay. But we love Ghana, we are in Ghana. So we have to support our country. It's our players have done very, very well. In the next um, in the next match coming on Friday, between Ghana and Uruguay, I pray that we have a win against Uruguay. So one one player kept us in the competition today. That's our goalkeeper. He was in between the sticks. What do you make of his performance today? Um, I, I, I'm really shocked um, when I heard of Atuzigi. And although I've not followed Atuzigi for some time now, but I've seen some kind of um, improvement. I think we have to we have to commence from group stages and go to a maybe quarter finals or finals. That
Congratulations to the Black Stars. We're taking a break on Word 10. We have showbiz for you.